Hey guys, welcome back to the Nedbro channel and today we're gonna to be talking about five big things not to do as a new resident doctor. So this video was shot shortly after match day, so congratulations to all of you new residents out there. Hopefully it will save you guys from making any of these mistakes. Let's get right into it. So the first one is gonna be, do not get lazy and run home before you finish your work. So some of these things when you hear them might be like, man, that is so obvious. But unfortunately, these kind of mistakes continue to happen on a daily basis by residents across this country. <laughs> but at a certain point, you are going to feel it. You're going to be at your breaking point. You're going to be exhausted. You're just going to want to get home. But it's very critical that you don't ignore that last bit of work that you might think you can just kind of get away with, that note that you might finish later, that order that, hey, I'm just going to remember to put it in later. Do it now because a lot of the times there are some pretty bad consequences if you rush on out of the hospital. Unfortunately, bad things happen. In the end of the day, we're resident doctors. The number one thing for any doctor out there is going to be putting the patient care first. So however, unfortunately, tired you are, however broken your system is with hours and, and all that stuff, you have to get your shit done before you leave. So if there's a note pending, especially like a limitation of treatment where a patient might want to be made DNR to full code or, or some really important stuff like that, you need to take care of it before you head home. That order for that medication, the patient's supposed to get at 9 p.m. and it's 6 p.m. and you're like, eh, I'll just do it when I get home. Do it now. Just, just do it now. The last thing you want is for that patient to not get proper care. The other last thing you want for you is you don't want to be called back in. You don't want to be called and reprimanded for any kind of dumb thing that you might have done in that last second where you just want to get home 30, 40 minutes earlier. Just get it done. The second big tip is do not say anything to your attending or do not write anything in a note that you did not actually do. This is huge. Sometimes even the smallest thing which you're like doing your physical exam and you're like, pupils equally round and reactive. Did you really check them? If you didn't really check them, please do not write that down. The last thing you want is you head in and one of his pupils is blown out, the other one's pinpoint, and now you're in trouble because they look back at your note and you wrote there, pupils equally round and reactive to light and accommodation. They're gonna come looking for you and be like, dude, what, what happened? Because it's really important to know, is this a new thing for the patient? Do we need to get a CT head right now? All these things matter in the long run. And your note, however much you think might not matter, really does. Because when you're called on a rapid uh, bedside where rapids are called for patients that are decompensated, they might have, uh, you know, really low blood pressures, they're about to crash, a rapid response is called, you go bedside, they're going to look at the most recent note and look at the physical exam and see how it differs from your physical right now. So... Don't make stuff up. <laughs> so this next tip is gonna take us back to back to high school. And this tip is do not talk crap about anybody else in your program or any of the other residents or attendings. Because unfortunately, these programs are usually small. You know everybody by the end of your first year. I know all the most of the folks on GI, on Hemong, and all this stuff, and you get familiar with everybody. Last thing you want to do is be talking crap, get a reputation for Mr. Drama Starter. You don't want to be that dude at the hospital. And along those same lines, don't be an ass. There's uh, just don't be an ass. There's so many times where you'll call a consult, especially to some of these specialty services that I understand you're busy, and and the other people on the line are just an ass like un understand when you're calling consoles a lot of the times the residents are just doing what the attending wants i remember i was calling an individual for pulling out a pericardial drain and the dude answered the phone he's like dude just you know pull it out pull harder i don't know what you want to do and he's just like having some crybaby attitude about it i'm like what do you want me to do? My attending is telling me she can't get it out. You want me to go in there and yank the pericardial drain. And the last thing I want to do is mess anything up and have this guy tamponade and get bleeding all around his heart. And it's my problem. Dude, what do you want me to do? Just like deal with it. You talk to my attending because she's the one asking. And I've certainly been on that end as well. Just giving somebody a hard time for calling about something that seemingly seems obvious or something like that. But like, just have some empathy. They're a resident on the other side or they're whatever on the other side. And, uh, and they're just trying to get their work done and go home too. So don't be an ass. One of the other things make sure you do not do is ever blame another doctor in front of the patient. Now, of course, doctors make mistakes. 
those things can be handled professionally and things like that. But the last thing you want to do is go into a room and the patient's like, why, you know, I'm bleeding. Why am I still on this anticoagulation, blah, blah. Last thing you want to do is walk in and be like, I don't know what doctor that they're so dumb. They shouldn't have put you on that. It's their fault. You never know the full story behind it. You have to investigate. Maybe there was another reason that person had to be on anticoagulation and you investigate it further. And it turns out it was a valid reason. Now you look really stupid. Now the patient has a problem and you created some serious drama. Basically, one of the big things you never want to do is talk crap about other doctors and their care with the patients because you don't know the full story. Unless you do know the full story and the doctor really did something that was terrible and you went through the proper channels to report it and everyone's on the same page and, and things have been investigated. But of course, that's a more formal process that you go through and everything's been established, but it's totally different than what I'm saying is walking in and literally talking crap about other doctors' care to patients, you're gonna cause some massive problems without having the full information. So don't do that. And my last tip, this one is, oh, oh pay attention to this one do not do oh my god i can't believe i even have to say this do not give a doctor's personal number to a patient don't give your personal number to a patient don't give another doctor's personal number to a patient this has happened multiple times where a patient or even a patient's doctor outpatient wants the number of the attending physician here or a resident or whatever, do not give personal numbers. Tell them to contact your hospital and go through the proper channels to contact you where your page or, or a nursing station or something like that. Do not give out personal numbers for God's sake. That just ends up really bad. People's personal information can be found through personal numbers. Um, you know, patients don't stop bothering attending physicians and residents and don't give out your personal number. That would be a really dumb move to do. That's a big one. So that guys, I hope you guys have a great time adjusting to your new residency programs. I'm gonna be putting out a lot of tips and things like that on this channel. So if you want to hear from me, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button down below. If you like this video, that helps out so much. I would really appreciate you guys to do that and leave a comment so we can, uh, we can respond to what you have to say. We'll see you guys in the next one.